we come to the second move, um, again, three forms put together, eight brocade to the beginning, 18 form Qigong sequence, and then a nine form uh, I picked up in the Himalayas. So again, it's 35 moves with three forms all bundled together. Doesn't really matter, you can do these singly or in, or in the sequence I'll put them. So the, this next one is the second of the eight brocades, and it's, uh, get this the right way around, or say this wrong way around. So again, lifting the hands to raise the condition of the stomach and the spleen. I've had it called other things. Like I say, there's 40,000 to 100,000 um, different forms of Qigong, roughly stated now. So again, you know, they can get mixed up, all these names. Doesn't really matter. You don't have to, it's just movement at the end of the day. With that, we're not going the traditional route of meridians, electromagnetic rivers, etc. Um, detailed in the traditional forms. I've done that on other tapes. We're going down a different path with the breathing. So again, the breathing is the main thing. You can spend as long as you like on the movement. You can pick up the movement straight away. The, the breathing we spend longer on. So again, we're going to go down the yogic Pilates hypnotic path with it. Okay, or the hypnotherapy breath with it. Again, a mixture of the breath, you're just gonna calibrate and synchronize that, integrate that in vinyasa, breath synchronized movement, basically in Sanskrit. Um, again, none of that really matters. So again, we just wanna get the breathing and then add it and, and just feel how good that feels after, okay? Each one's linked to organs. Um, so this one, you know, it says what it does on the, on the tin. Uh, Stomach and spleen meridians. I don't go too much detail with them meridians. Um, I believe that all the breath will manifest in every single organ, cell, sinew of the body in a compensatory manner. Um, so that will reach every atom of the body. So you know, it's you, you'll feel the benefits after. So let's go straight in with that. So. On the traditional form, we're not going to breathe into any locker blue in a sort of Taoist breath type way. We're going to zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals, take the navel towards the spine, and as you do that right now, we're going to breathe in through the nose and exhale through pursed lips in the usual Pilates manner. Now, as you do that right now, you'll feel that breath going low and deep to these lower lobes of the lungs, into costals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. Okay, you can even get the two middle fingers touching underneath the breast bones, palms on the lower lobes of lungs, on the xiphoid touching, these two middle fingers touching underneath the xiphoid process, the sternum and the breast bone. Okay, that little dip there, shoulders down. As you do that breathing right now, zip up pelvic floor, scoop out abdominals, and you breathe in through the nose, and exhale through pursed lips. If you're sort of blowing out a candle through pursed lips, you'll see this happen. The two middle fingers slightly part and come back to touch each other. Just adding width to the lungs and length for the owl breath. The fingers would be moving like seaweed on the bottom of the seed bed. Even just a micro movement, a millimetre, that's happening, okay? Because again, there's nowhere else you can breathe. As you zip up pelvic floor and scoop out your abdominals, that's only gonna help you breathe low and deep into these lower lobes of lungs, into costals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. Okay, so just keep on breathing into these fish gills, 3D style, organ deep, sow deep, even bone marrow deep, into these lower lobes of lungs, into costals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. Okay, lovely. As though someone's opening an umbrella inside your rib cage and letting go, or someone's just pushing out from inside your ribs and letting go. Lovely, free expansive breath. Just coming organ deep, cell deep, even bone marrow deep into these lower lobes of lungs. Again, that's lateral thoracic breathing in Pilates. So again, that helps us use our pelvic floor and our corset muscle, the transverse abdominus, the corset muscle, three layers deep. Just all segmentally stabilizing our spine and helping us use that in the most efficient manner, okay, to support the spine. So any sort of real bad back injuries, with these simple exercises you can do, and then get a bit of muscle memory on that corset muscle. Now again, I digress there as we carry on breathing through the nose and exhaling through pursed lips. 
we're going to do the opposite now. We're going to close the mouth and go a little bit more down a yogic path to get that smaller filter through the nose, which is going to help us lengthen the whole wheel cycle of the breath. Okay, it's going to help us lengthen the whole of the breath because it's a smaller filter through the nose and that helps us lengthen the breath. Okay, nice and long. As with all the yoga asanas, that length in the breath helps you melt in to whatever movement you're doing. It's like a tool, it's the bridge between the mind and the body, it's our gauge. To see how deeply relaxed we can get into these postures, the breath within the breath, as Kabir calls it, that's what we're bringing our mind to. Now, as you consciously bring your mind to that breath, as you still zip up pelvic floor and scoop out your abdominals, and carry on breathing in through the nose and out through the nose, you'll feel you want to just allow the out breath to go longer than the in breath. So just allow that to happen. With that natural rise and fall of the rib cage, you'll naturally feel as you let go, everything just relaxes and you're just gonna naturally wanna just allow the out breath to go longer than the in breath. Okay, just allow that to happen. That's all you have to do on that, as you're doing that right now, as you're zipping up pelvic floor and scooping out your abdominals, allow the out breath to go longer than the in breath, and then consciously take your mind to that out breath. Rather than the breath breathe you, you're gonna breathe the breath, that out breath. You're gonna consciously lengthen that out breath within your limits, you're not forcing anything. And as you do that, you're gonna quadruple it, double it, or triple it. Whatever suits you, feels more natural to you. Everyone's count will be different. And then as you do that, just allow that simplicity to relax the mind. And as you allow that simplicity to relax the mind, you'll be bringing in something called the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, well you'll be benefiting that in a very beneficial way. The in breath's conscious thought, the out breath is subconscious thought. So as you elongate the out breath longer than the in breath, that's gonna help us bring benefit to all the things we don't think about, sleep, digestion, rest, and relaxation will be benefited by elongating out breath longer than the in breath. Even cellular communication, organ function, process elimination, assimilation within the body. All the housekeeping properties of the body have been benefited by elongating the out breath longer than the in breath and that simplicity will allow that to happen. Okay, so that's a little bit more of the hypnotic or hypnotherapy type breathing. Commonly known as 7-Eleven breathing, similar to that, but we're not counting the breath. We're just elongating the out breath longer than the in breath. Lovely, now that's gonna be perfectly all right to calibrate and synchronize and link to the motion we're gonna do in a minute. If you wanna take on a little bit further, maybe a little bit more slightly advanced yogic breath to so ujjayi breath, victorious breath in Sanskrit, then we're gonna grip your esophagus, make it more narrow and make this sound. Anyway, let's do it, I'm gonna demonstrate so you can hear it. It's a uh, shoulders down, okay, and exhale. Again, as you will feel, that's gonna lengthen the breath even longer. If you can't get that, carry on doing what you're doing, okay? Again, that's gonna be perfectly good enough. If you can get the advanced breath at the, at the moment, then that's great. Ujjayi breath sounds like this. You, as you grip it out, esophagus, that narrows that filter, and you exhale again. If you can get that, don't worry. Otherwise, carry on breathing without the Ujjayi breath. If you've got the Ujjayi breath, just keep on going with that silky, whistling, raspy sound from the back of the throat. That silky breath, Ujjayi breath, seashore breath. Okay, that's called as well. That sort of Darth Vader breath from the back of the throat. It's like going, breathing in, and you're going, ah, with the mouth shut. It's gonna help us build the heat within the body. Okay, it's gonna help us fan the fire to burn all the toxins in the body. Lovely. And it's gonna help stimulate the thyroid gland, which helps with weight control, etc. 
lovely. If you can't get that, don't worry. It's very sort of similar. We're going near Ashtanga yoga breath. Not quite similar, but very, very, very similar. Okay. Lovely. But if you can't get that, don't worry. Carry on breathing and synchronizing and calibrating the breath. As we go into the motion, again, I'm going to go back and demonstrate that. Struggling for a little bit of room. So from here, hands are going to come here and then we're going to come up. Now, this is the exhale part. This is the inhale part. My shoulders try and creep up. As with a lot of us, 90% of us have overactive in the upper traps, the way we live. So really allow these to melt down. They might come up a little bit as you're coming up, but just allow them to drop back down into their own position. Find where they are before you start even. Okay, you can sometimes have a mind of their own. I'll digress there. So again, exhale for as long as you like. This hand pushing up, this hand pushing down. Then you're gonna breathe in. Come central, they come in, and you exhale. Be long on this motion. Okay, then you're gonna breathe in. Exhale, this part's longer. If you get there before the out-breath's finished, just carry on exhaling, making it out-breath longer. Yeah, that shoulder's drop. You have to drop it up and drop it down. Do that. Again, I like adding this in to make it slightly more yogic to get these obliques, these external obliques, these teres major muscles stretched. Even these these muscles that cross across the body like this. A lot of our walking gait as we walk, quadriceps lumbar and the, Q, the QL muscles crossing over the back. These internal bleeds, all these cross muscles, a lot to do with our walking gait, get stretched as we come here. If you want to partially empty the foot onto your toes, you can do. Come back, exhale. And that's not like traditionally the pose. Hips, ankles, knees stacked, breathing in and exhale. But again, really exhale in and use that exhale. It's like a tool, like a bridge between the mind and the body in a sort of yogic manner as you stretch. These are meant to be like yawning stretches. I mean, there's a lot of evidence to support that yawning's really good for it. We restrict it a lot in everyday life through uh, lots of social things like being rude, etc. But um, again, it's really good. So anything's like a yawning stretch, a lot of Qigong postures are like that. It's like a yawning stretch, like that first yawn in the morning. And exhale, they're meant to be sort of relaxed stretches. But again, even these finger flexors, again, get a good stretch. These forearm flexors there, get a good stretch there. And again, these obliques, the external obliques, the internal obliques, all these muscles that cross basically. Because again, if you get one muscle tight, it upsets the walking gait, that shift to the hips. So it's a very functional exercise. Lovely. So it's taking an arrow to shoot the golden eagle next or draw an arrow to let the arrow fly next the third move the eight move qigong sequence or the eight brocades again three again three forms together 35 lovely bang